Hello, everybody. Hello and welcome. Welcome to another day here on Creative Adobe. <laughs> Oof. Adobe Live. Oh, boy. Yikes. More tea for Evan, I think. <laughs> I'm Evan Abrams, and welcome to Adobe Live. We're having a creative morning here with everybody hanging out, hanging out in the chat. We're getting started this morning uh, in Adobe After Effects, so hopefully that's going to be a good time for everyone. If you haven't used After Effects before, if you are new to it, then uh, then please, this is this is the right place. Uh, ask questions, get creative, get get uh, get concerned. I don't know. Just <laughs> ask questions if there's anything that seems um, unknown or unfamiliar, and I'll try to help you through. Today we are going to be continuing our work from yesterday, where we're making some um, uh, some some. <laughs> like a like a social kit, like a bunch of templates to help make social media posts a lot easier, uh, keeping things on brand. And today we're going to continue with that work. But that's not the only thing going on this morning. Um, <laughs> we have a rich, full day of activities going on. So let me just pull the schedule up for us here real quick. You'll be getting started with me, and then coming up after this is uh, some creative challenges with Voodoo Val. Then we've got photo editing, uh, some illustrator challenges, some branding and identity. Uh, you got your XD creative challenge coming up, and then rounding off our day with some draw along with Kyle Webster, and finally a design off going on. So it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a great day of fantastic things here on Thursday. October 29th, wherever you are in the world, um, I hope that you're you're doing well, and I hope you're able to stick around with us uh, for as long as you like. It's a great it's a great way to to learn and uh, and, and improve and to hopefully uh, spark something new uh, in your creative journey. So, uh, <laughs> like I said, if you have any questions during today's getting started session, do let me know. I'm here to help, and uh, we are assuming. The people are just getting started. Um, also, everyone in the chat, good to see people in there. We've got our moderator, <laughs> Tim Mobest, holding it down. Uh, he always cracks me up uh, every day when I'm on here. And uh, of course, we've got Reverb Mike hanging out. Karebi, good to see you. Umicorn, how's it going? It's so great. So great to see all the regulars coming back. If you're watching this on YouTube, please come and join us on behance.net. Uh, slash live so I can see all the things you're saying in the chat. I love to love to see what people are up to. I want to know where you are, what you do, what you'd like to do in After Effects. And uh, we'll see uh, we'll see where we go today. Hmm. So without further ado, let's jump into it and continue our work. I'm gonna quickly kind of review uh, what we were doing yesterday before we jump into today's stuff. So here on the screen lovely After Effects interface. Yesterday we worked on a bunch of interesting things. We started we started with animating uh, this logo popping on and we talked a little bit about um, animating things using their properties. So everything in After Effects is about altering properties over time and then the combination of those changes to properties is what turns into beautiful motion. So we talked about perhaps we would change things like the path properties, right? We can we can change paths that we would draw in Illustrator and we can modify their paths over time to make them move around. Or we could change things about, uh, <laughs> we could change things like uh, the trees here. We could make them, we have them all scaling up, boop, 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 boop pop, pop, pop in an interesting way. So they appear, you know, fun and, and interesting. And we're doing that by changing their scale over time. That's another property of a layer that we can change. Today, we're going to talk about sort of making things a little bit procedural. We are going to look at saving ourselves some time. Because yesterday, we talked about creating new assets from work we've already done. That keeps things um, really nice and consistent across a project. So if you're doing branded uh, social, uh, if you're doing branded social content, then uh, you are able to um, you're able to keep everything harmonized over a piece, and you can you know avoid duplicating too much work. <laughs> so hopefully this uh, this helps uh, helps get everybody sort of on the same page. So like I said, yesterday we made this uh, logo uh, animate on. And then from there, 
we looked at uh, some other things. We made a lower third out of the, the same components that we had created yesterday as well that we can now use and drop down uh, wherever we would like. And today we are going to look at some other elements. So we are going to talk a little bit more about things like callouts. I think those are a specific feature that we want to create. Here this one says, this one says tree buddy, and we are calling out this squirrel. Um, which if you, if you live in a place that has a lot of squirrels, um, then uh, you, I'm sure you're aware of uh, needing to call your squirrels out often for the various uh, things that they do uh, around, the, around the yard. Uh, so it could be vexing to have too many squirrels around, but they're part of nature. They were here first, so we should let them do what they're doing. But we're going to talk about making callouts. That's something we're going to do today. We're going to talk about making transitions. It's another common element. And we are going to talk about uh, text, animating text. And all of this, we're going to make into some templates, some mogerts. Because if we do the work once, we don't want to have to make, say, you know, if we are going to make a call out for tree buddy, we don't want to then make a uh, hundred, a uh, <laughs> hundred different copies of this for every permutation. We want to make one that we can then come back and only modify, only change the things we're interested in changing about it and not make a hundred different versions or, or variations on that. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And hopefully, uh, Clark, hopefully Clark, we are going to, uh, make, uh, After Effects a little bit less, a little bit less intimidating. Hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, this and, and uh, <laughs> reverb mic. This is that's correct. We're really emulating Bob Ross today, as we as we have a, a little squirrel friend. This is a little squirrel friend that I found on uh, Adobe Stock. You can, you can download a lot of great free stuff on Adobe Stock these days. So I would recommend checking that out if you need assets to play with. Um, they have a lot of great things on there. So. Also, I would say people in the chat, good people of the chat, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any concerns, get at me. And if you have any suggestions about things that you would want to put, if you had to assemble, if you had to assemble a kit of social media, um, little social media bits to make your, uh, make your various posts, uh, edit together your videos, let me know what components you would want in that kind of a kit. And hopefully we'll see if we have time to get into some, some requests from the audience, because yesterday we did three kind of big things. And today we are going to be doing, um, more smaller things. So today is going to be a lot of smaller items. That's what we're going to be doing. So Let's get into it. Let's start ourselves off by making a little call out, a little bleep that's going to come out there so that we can tag things in a scene. We can give some context to our viewers. Call outs are great because they allow us to have an amount of graphical information and textual information that helps us recontextualize the images that we're seeing. So in a social media post, this can be used for irony, for humor. This can uh, be a call out about features of a product. So there are many uses for call outs, and this is kind of the generic name for any time we're going to have this thing popping on the screen somewhere that highlights something that is important for the viewer to look at. So let us go ahead and create a new composition. And I'm going to be working in 1080 by 1080 square, 30 frames per second. A lot of social playback is in 30 frames a second, so that's why I'm I'm dealing with that. And I've created a, a preset for myself in this list here for square 30 frames a second. You can save all kinds of presets, any kind of composition preset that you use a lot of. You would, you would probably want to dial in all your settings and then save it, and then it'll show up in this sort of bottom list here, filling up with interesting things. So we've created this, starts off blank. Mine has the transparent background here. You can toggle that on and off right there. So if yours doesn't look like mine, that's the only, that's the only, uh, the only difference I hope that concern there. And let's start by popping on a circle. Weep. Now, why would we, I want to talk a little bit about why we're making certain choices and all of it stems from this first choice, right? This first choice that we did here in this logo reveal about how things are going to be coming on. And so not only do we want things to 
have kind of um, the same style, the same visual, uh, thin line look, thin line, two colors, keep it on brand, but we want the motion to remain on brand as well. And part of that is we want very similar kind of popping when things come on. We can do this fairly simply by uh, grabbing certain things like this scale. So we can grab the keyframes of this scale and use that to power the motion elsewhere. So I'm gonna close down a lot of these comps because we don't really need them open. We have comp one here and let me just uh, rename comp one. Let's call this our callout example. That way I'm able to find this again. So like I said, we want to make use of the scale in here and now we are going to do something out here. So I'm gonna start by creating a circle out here. So I'm gonna double click on the ellipse as you can see, we've created an ellipse that is the same size as the frame. I like to make my shape layers by double clicking on the shape icon and that pops it out here. And then what I'm gonna do is go into the ellipse, go into the fill perhaps, and let's make this a, a, white, a white color here using my color picker. That's great. And let's see, the stroke, I'm happy with the color of that stroke because that's our branded color blue there. Uh, the stroke width, we're gonna leave at five. And I'm going to dial into the ellipse path here, and I'm going to make it smaller, 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 smaller. I'm altering that property to make it smaller, like so. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I want this to pop on in some way. So I'm going to go to that original work we did. I'm going to grab a pair of these keyframes. I'm going to go Command C to copy them. I'm going to go back to our callout example, bring up the scale, and although if I just paste, right, if I just go Command V, it assumes that I want to put the scale information on the scale. So there it is, it's gonna live here now, and there we go, this is now popping, and it's gonna feel cohesive, because this has the same feel as the rest of the stuff. So there we go, we got pop, this comes on, and now I would like uh, kind of a banner to come out from that, to whoop, get, get long away from it, so that I can, I can have information on that banner. So it's a little bit more readable. So I'm gonna to navigate to the Outdoors logo here. And a little tip for getting around, if you want to sort of go into a pre-comp or you wanna find out where this layer has, or this composition has ended up in the world, you can hit tab. So at any point, if you hit tab, it's gonna call up this interesting flow chart so I'm currently here on the Outdoors logo, and inside Outdoors logo, we have a comp called Inside Circle. So this flowchart is telling me, well, there's a comp in here and it's called this. But this thing called Outdoors logo is found in Bug, in Podcast Snippet, and it's found in Simple Logo On. It's found in all these places. So this gives us a little map to where things are being used in our project. So. There we go. Hopefully, hopefully that's a little bit helpful. Now, I want to take one of these little ribbons, one of these ribbon ends. I'm just gonna select the whole layer. I'm gonna copy it, Command C, or Control C if you're on a, on a Windows machine. And then I'm gonna paste it out here, Command V, boop. And you can see where it drops this layer down. It drops it down, sort of where, where it was living in the previous um, in the previous composition. So see this right ribbon here lives at 20 frames, 20 frames in. And so here, that's where it ends up getting pasted. So if you're ever confused about why is it pasting here and not there, that's where layers get pasted. They, they end up where they were before in relation to uh, time, we would say. So you might have to move them around. And in this case, we do. We have to move it, move it back here. And it's also way over there. It's it's over here in a place that I, I didn't really anticipate it being. And that's because where it is is defined by its position property. So where it is over here, same position property, that just means something different in this comp. So I'm going to bring it over here so it can live right there. And I'm going to put this layer below this layer. Tim, you've never seen this amazing flowchart? Oh, it's amazing. It's so good. If you're ever lost, it can help you. So here we go. We've got this little callout, boop, and this little tiny banner comes out. 
Well, what we want is a longer banner than that. So I'm gonna go to these path keyframes because these define um, what was going on with this path. And uh, Michelle, uh, yeah, yesterday we we animated um, the logo itself. So if you wanna go back and watch uh, all of the things we did with that, uh, that's gonna be archived forever uh, on Behance. And uh, you know, it, it forms kind of the foundation of the rest of our of our pieces so definitely check that out but hopefully hopefully people are not too lost um with with going back there um this ribbon here is animated uh, hopefully hopefully i'm i'm retreading enough as we as we um uh, go through some of the pieces um so this layer here its shape is its path is changing over time because we have these two keyframes on the path and now I'm just going to alter this last one here. I'm going to grab these key, these points here, these little points, and I'm going to drag them out. And I'm going to drag them out as far as I think I'll need them. So you can see this pops on, and then this banner comes out. And we talked a little bit yesterday about, so we've talked about a flow chart. Let's talk about another type of graph, perhaps, the speed graph or the value graph here in the graph editor. So with this property selected, I'm going to open up the graph editor and here we can see the speed of this path changing over time, okay? And what I would love to do is to make this a little bit more extreme. So I'm gonna grab this handle, I'm gonna give it a pull. I'm gonna grab this handle and give it a little pull. So this graph editor, yesterday we talked about what it represents. And since we're, we're all just getting started in After Effects today, then, you know, we're gonna take it a little bit slow here and the graph editor is one of these tools that I really recommend people become familiar with because no matter what you're going to do in motion design, um, what we're controlling is primarily a change of something over time. And this graph editor tells us what that change over time is. So in this case, this is showing us speed change. So this is, we are looking at, whoop. We are looking at a, well, I'm just gonna go to that graph editor thing again. Yes, so we are looking at, we have the edit speed graph selected here. So we're looking at a graph of speed over time. So we know, thanks to this graph, that this point here is the fastest, and then this point down here is the slowest. It's going at zero units per second. So that means that we're going to get this kind of fast start and then an ease into things. So let me just, whoop, there we go. So it's starting fast and then easing like that. Hopefully that's good. Hopefully that's good. <laughs> now, the next move here, we want to put some text out in the world. All right, so Command T, bring up our text tool. And I'm just gonna type out some text. Let's see here, hopefully I've got the right kind of character here. And let's see, uh, let's just type in, ooh, ooh, ooh. make sure that your text layer is selected uh, and that you've kind of, you've double clicked on it or else you'll start <laughs> hitting the keyboard and you'll be, <laughs> you'll be typing things all over the place. <clears throat> okay. That's one of the dangers I run into uh, all the time um, because <laughs> <laughs> because I, I forget that I've I've moved out of the text layer and then suddenly I'm just hitting keyboard shortcuts all over the place. So we are sticking with the same font that we used in the initial logo. Huschka Hus rounded? I'm I'm very bad when all these consonants get uh, put together um, because I don't speak enough languages. I've not put in the, put in the time to... I'm also very bad at pronouncing like... Harry Potter names. Um, and Nathan, I, I use both graphs interchangeably and I, I highly recommend people uh, get to know all of the graphs. So we've got the call out here and we will want to choose a weight. Let's see, let's go with medium perhaps. And let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's go with maybe a 72 point font here. I'm gonna position it kind of in the middle. Now, something I'm gonna say here, um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Patricia. Let's get Helvetica in the mix. <laughs> uh, Helvetica, my favorite font. Um, I know you shouldn't shouldn't have favorites, but that's mine. 
So the call out here, if this is just the word call out, this is fine. However, if it is happy birthday, you'll notice that now this is way too big. It doesn't really fit. Oh boy, if, if someone had to come in later and change what the call out was, we're going to be in, in trouble because then we have to modify so many things to make it kind of responsive. And the biggest problem that we have is that, you know, these letters are, are touching the bottom there and we don't want that. So our font is actually too big. Whenever we're trying to design systems of a kind, we want to make sure that we are uh, accounting for all of the use cases we might run into. Um, and sometimes in a more advanced thing, I would say let's open up expressions and do some fun things um, around that. And uh but this is getting started time so we are not going to do that i'm just going to say when you're just getting started try to design around those eventualities right now i'm going to change the paragraph here whoop to be a little bit like this so that the text is being referenced off of this side and what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to say uh, let's say red squirrel Square, square L for now. For now, that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna write out here, and we're gonna see if this ends up needing modifications later. Now, the big thing is how is this text gonna come on? We've done a few things already um, using our using our various uh, tools. We made a lower third here, and the lower third, as you can see, we revealed this text layer using uh, this rectangle layer, and we did that using something called the set mat. So we applied the set mat effect to this layer, which lets it take uh, information from another layer and decide where it can be seen. So we are gonna do the same thing, a little bit of a retread from yesterday, but keeping it consistent, will keep things kind of on brand. It'll seem like all these things are consistent. So I'm gonna go set mat. So I'm gonna add the set mat effect to the text layer. I'm gonna pick take mat from, and uh, a mat is kind of a one of these core concepts um, in sort of After Effects. You're gonna see the word all over the place. And uh, a mat is simply uh, an image or information that is defining, uh, it's gonna define sort of where something can be seen or not seen. So for example, we're taking an alpha mat and alpha information, we've got say red, uh, green, and blue uh, pixel color information, but we also have alpha information, which is how transparent something is. So we're going to ask another layer, we're going to ask specifically the right ribbon outline layer, where we would like to be seen. And we're going to take the alpha information of this and apply it to this. So that means only in areas where we see the ribbon will we also see this text layer. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Um, this is going to allow us to sort of reveal one thing with the other thing, which I think is pretty fair and good. I think that's nice. So we're letting one layer control another layer. And I think that's that's going to be very helpful for us as we as we work on with these things. And hopefully that's a technique that you can you can make use of uh, in other ways. So with our with our text going on, I think what I would like to do, it feels a little bit static, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the position of this layer, which I do by hitting P, or you can always twirl into, you can twirl into all of the various transform effects by, by twirling in these little triangles here. And I'm going to set a keyframe on position, and then I'm going to go back in time, going back in time, and I'm going to drag this layer, I'm going to drag it over here a little bit. And drag it over here and you can see you can see this little interesting thing that's happening right we can see this little sliver right of where we can see this layer and that's just because we should probably take it and put it below that circle so we don't have to worry about that kind of thing we can see that little sliver because there's a little sliver of this other layer of the right ribbon layer right so hopefully this this is all making sense so now 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 we are going to ease this last keyframe here because we like to keep things keep things easy um, we are going to make these first keyframes here linear and we're going to make both of these graphs look the same so 
when we want things to be consistent, we should probably have the graphs be similar. So I'm going to grab this handle and give it a pull like that. Ooh. Give it a pull, holding down shift so that this stays, stays locked down there. And now we have this nice kind of harmonized motion as this comes out, right? Ooh. Very nice. Okay. So this layer can also simply start uh, from here. So I'm going to hold down Alt, hit my, hit my right square bracket to trim the layer to only start there, because I think that's perfectly acceptable. And there we go. So we have this pop, and then this text kind of comes out into the world. Now, one other little bit of information that you might want to put out here is perhaps you would like... Um, something to indicate uh, why we're looking at the red squirrel. Maybe we would put a little icon um, to indicate that, uh, that perhaps um, this is an animal or like the kind of call out this is. Uh, we could put anything we'd like on here and we want it to pop in in the same way as uh, this layer here. So let me draw a little pair of binoculars. <laughs> How would I give that a try? So I'm going to use shape layers here Draw, draw a little pair of binoculars. Let's see. Um, <laughs> actually, you know what? You know what? I've already drawn a pair of binoculars, so you could draw them uh, in all kinds of places. I was like, oh, I should not be spending time boring you with watching me draw a pair of binoculars. Because um, <laughs> I already had a little pair of binoculars right here. I'm going to copy those, and we're going to paste them in here. Now, this could be... Um, a picture, this could be an image, this could be any kind of layer at all. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, but what we're going to do is place it on top of this where we think it belongs, and we're going to parent, we're going to parent this thing here that is called binoculars, and we're going to parent that to this shape layer, right? And the parenting, what that means is that the one layer follows the other. So now we've got, maybe this is a pair of, like, pince-nez glasses. I don't know if I drew that very well, but uh, <laughs> so now we've got an icon, we've got some text, things are popping on, things are looking good. Great. I think we've succeeded in creating a callout of some kind, a very basic callout. But our work here is not yet done. Let's say we want to use our callout example. We want to use this somewhere out in the world. And let's say, let's say I'm going to create um, an assembly example. So if you're making kind of social media content out in the world, then you are most likely going to be assembling a bunch of clips, whether it's going to be images, video, and then we're going to put our motion design, our motion graphics over top of that. So I've got a bunch of wonderful assets that I downloaded from uh, <laughs> downloaded from Adobe Stock, uh, all these wonderful free things. So I'm going to bring out uh, this footage of CMOS, which I think is pretty nice, or, or, or what is this, some kind of kelp or algae? I don't know. If you're able to identify what this uh, uh, C stuff is, let me know. And, and hello, Lynn. Uh, Lynn from Canada. Where, whereabouts in Canada are you at? I'm in fabulous Ottawa, Ontario myself, as you can maybe tell uh, by, my, by my accent. Um, and now, so we've got our video out here, our video, and then we are just going to bring our callout example over top of it, right? Now, uh, this is obviously not a red squirrel. That doesn't make any sense at all. But now we can position this and scale it and put it sort of wherever we would like. In the scene, I recommend using your proportion grid here to help you line things up in a, in a sort of um, regular way, right? keeping things nice and aligned uh, into, into regular grids. I have mine uh, broken up into sixths, sixths. Uh, <laughs> so that we can, um, so we can have this stuff. Um, I like the rule of thirds. Then I also like to subdivide it. If you would like to alter your, um, what we call the proportion grid, you can always go up here. You can go into your preferences, grids and guides, and then you can change your grid, your proportional grid. Um, see, I've got a proportional grid making six and six um <laughs> subdivisions so that's why it's divided into six uh it's a hard word for me to say sometimes that's why i have to drink a lot of water when i do these things mm -mm -mm. 
Okay. So, but if you are sort of uh, thinking, oh, I prefer the rule of thirds, then we're going to go three and three, then we end up with this grid, right? So you can make all kinds of, of choices uh, for your, your various grid situations. That's another kind of stylistic element that can help branded content stand out, by the way, while I'm, while I'm discussing that kind of thing. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go, um, I'm going to go back into those preferences, grids and guides, just to refresh. This is what we were talking about, grids and guides. I'm going to go six and six, and there we go. So I like to kind of just keep things in these little boxes. So if we were reusing this callout many, many times, let's say we're going to look at this clip of Moss for five seconds, and then, oh, I don't know. Let's look at this clip of a mountain road. We'll look at we'll look at this mountain road for another five seconds or so. There we go. That's a nice a nice mountain. We'll do like this. So we'll have this, and then we'll look at this for another five seconds. And we wanted multiple callouts out here, so I'm going to trim this layer uh, to terminate here when we when we sort of switch scenes. Um, I would want this to not say red squirrel, but something else. And I think for this scene here, I would want it to be not red squirrel again. It would have to be a very, uh, very different thing as well. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we are going to turn this into a, a template. All right. So I'm going to go back into a callout example and I'm going to go uh, to window. And we're going to open up our essential graphics. Okay. Now this is going to allow us to create templates, right? And the importance here is that we want to um, make this stuff um, something that we can easily modify later. So in the essential graphics, I'm going to choose that we are working on the callout example. That is indeed the comp we have open. How wonderful is this? And now we are going to give this a name. If we were going to save this as an external template, then we would want to give this a name like callout, or maybe you would name it um, outdoors callout, right? And uh, so those are the various things you're going to want. Now we're going to want to add properties that we modify uh, later. Um, <laughs> And uh, Gareth is asking, what's all the After Effects stuff then? Um, I'm not sure. All of this is, is After Effects stuff. <laughs> I know. <it's laughs> Look, if you, all you have to do is stay up extra early to, to have more After Effects in your life. <laughs> uh, don't, 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 don't be jealous of who gets the After Effects streams, everybody. We're, there's, enough, there's enough After Effects to go around. Uh, <laughs> So here's what we go. We, we want to then take properties from this and we are going to go into the text, grab our source text property and bring that up here. So this is a property that we are putting into the essential graphics panel because we want to modify it later. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and save our work here real quick. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to then go back into the assembly example. And you'll notice that a new little buddy um, has shown up here. A new little, a new little property has has appeared. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Wild property has appeared. Uh, do let me know if there's any Pokemon fans in the audience. Um, so now inside this master properties, I can twirl into that and look. It's the source text that I added from before. And if I were to change this to say uh, call out text. Look at that, the word, the word changes down here. So we know what that thing is. So now I can go in here. I'm going to go edit value and let's call this, um, I don't know, gross moss. Um, and look at that. It is updated to now say gross moss, ah, but we haven't, we haven't made any new compositions. We've simply modified this instance of the composition. So then we go here. Well, this one still says red squirrel. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to this call out example. I'm going to edit this value and call this, I don't know, uh, red mountain. All right. 
So, oh, would you look at that? Uh, Red Mountain, that's what it says now. We, we nailed it, okay? <laughs> so one of the, the uh, issues that we may end up with here is that uh, we need to perhaps edit some of the properties of that. So I'm gonna click Enable Font Size Adjustment. So in here, in this Essential Graphics panel, remember that we're still modifying things about callout example, right? That's what we're altering here in the Essential Graphics panel, even though we're testing it out here in the assembly example. So I'm going to edit the properties of the callout text, and I'm gonna say enable font size adjustment. I'm gonna set, set okay for that. Now, now I have this little slider under here. Now, if we go in here and we click on this, we go edit value, right? There is, um, we are missing, we are missing some stuff, you would say, right? Where is the stuff? And this font size um, adjustment here um, is not showing up out here, right? Um, and that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit of an issue, uh, I think. So we went to if we go and we try to edit this value, you'll notice there's not much we can change about it. So this is something though that. If you want to allow someone who opens up your template in, say, um, Premiere or uh, or yeah, Premiere externally, external to After Effects, they're going to have the ability to alter uh, the font size there. For us, for our our particular needs here, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to edit the value uh, to just say Mountain. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little editing on myself and do that. Um, Reverb Mike has a, a question. Uh, what if your text is more complicated? For example, you want to use a different font for each word. Now the trouble with that is that that information is not being held um, particular to each word or each letter or each. Um, element, right? So if you want to change the font, it's sort of a global thing. Now, if you did want to have a more complex situation like that, you would want to have multiple text layers um, so that they don't get overwritten. Now, this gets very complex if you say want them all in a line or you want them to, to remain relative to each other. That is a bit more of an advanced move where you are going to want to, if you still want them to be reflexive to each other, that's gonna require an amount of expressions work. It's certainly possible. It just requires uh, some more advanced rigging uh, than we would need today. Um, but those kinds of things are definitely possible but you you need to um, do a lot more a lot more fiddly work uh, with it to make that happen so hopefully that 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 answers uh, answers that it can be can be very difficult though uh, to sort of make that happen in good order but I think I am happy with these callouts I am I am pleased with how these are working if we want to use after effects to assemble things and I do I like to do that we get uh, an extra little little bit of fun in here. We can go layer, time, enable time remapping on these particular callouts. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead here. So on gross moss, I'm gonna move ahead. I know that all of this animation finishes doing things at around one, one second here, right? So I'm just gonna go to where um, the time remap property says one second. I'm going to set a keyframe on that. I'm going to move ahead to the end, delete its keyframe at the end, so we don't we don't have that. And I'm going to take these. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to paste them. So I've pasted them into the into the same spot. Then I'm going to right click keyframe assistant, time reverse them. So so what's happening here? The time remap property we talked about properties a little bit is going from zero up to one. It's staying at one. And then it's going from one down to zero. Oh, look at that. The gross moss packs up and goes away, right? So hopefully uh, hopefully that makes sense um, with, with how this thing kind of goes together. But this will allows you to very quickly bring things on and take them away. This is a very quick little, uh, little way to make that happen. And I would recommend you actually pinch these keyframes together. Remember what these keyframes represent is when we are seeing things, right? So we, we, if we pinch them together, that means that things are gonna go faster. And so we can pinch them together like that. So now we've got this lovely call out that shows up 
and then goes away. Okay, great. We've done it. We've done callouts. I'm going to give us a big thumbs up for that. And here's something else I'd like to do. I want to make a transition. I think transitions are a nice way to um, continue being uh, sort of branded between things. And uh, what we're going to do... <laughs> Jeremy, that's fantastic. I'm glad. I'm glad people enjoy getting more uh, more Evan Abrams in their life. Um, that's always very very flattering to hear. Um, so, what if I wanted a kind of transition between these two? We have a hard cut here. We could do a dissolve, but perhaps a transition that is more uh, <laughs> on brand uh, on brand for that. Um, <laughs> So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a, a new composition. I'm going to call this transition example. Now, uh, we've, we've looked at a few things already, um, a few kind of motions that we've been doing. I'm not going to need my essential graphics panel for now. I'm going to send that away. Um, <laughs> a page turn transition, perhaps. Um, <laughs> star wipe. Oh, boy. <laughs> we're going to... A lot of interesting, interesting suggestions from the crowd. <laughs> I want to, I want to kind of keep things on brand um, with the shapes that we have here. Is uh, the circle, for example? Uh, so we are going to do. I was planning on doing kind of a um, uh, a form of wipe. We are we're going to do kind of a Looney Tunes thing. We're going to do we're going to do both forms of um, a bit of a custom. Uh, <laughs> a custom circle circle wipe. So we're going to have circles come from the center and then we're going to have uh, sort of the iris close down. We're going to do both of those. So hopefully that's going to be a good time. Uh, so here in this transition example, let's do a circle coming out of the middle. Let's start with that. And so we need to first create a circle. Double click the ellipse tool. Ah, nailed it. There it is. Circle. Okay. I'm going to bring its stroke down to zero. I don't think I want a stroke on this. And let's call this, I don't know, circle one. Okay. And the circle, I'm actually going to make the ellipse size bigger, 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 bigger. So it covers the entire screen. Okay. Covers the entire frame for us. Fantastic. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it up. Right. This is going to be some pretty simple stuff um, that... I'm setting a keyframe at 100%, moving that keyframe ahead in time, and then setting a keyframe here at zero. So what's this doing? It's just growing. And that's kind of meh. It's also not really in keeping with our branding. So ease this last keyframe, go into the graph editor, pull this handle here like so, and now we have a much faster start to it. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer on the time because I want to tighten this up. I'm going to tighten this up so that it goes a little bit faster like that. Okay, interesting, interesting, good stuff. Now, I want this to be uh, a little bit more interesting, right, than we would than we would do before. You know, <laughs> like Tim's saying, we do simple iris wipes. That's 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 no thing. That's that's a, that's something you can do in an in an editor like Premiere. But we are motion designers, so let us add more layers to this. So. I'm going to add, let's see, let's make the first color. Let's go into our, um, let us return to our, our Outdoors logo here. Let's see, simple logo on. Okay, we have three kind of colors to play with. We have we have the blue, we have the white, and we have the, uh, the beige here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I would like to use these three colors. Let's have us kind of go through three of them. <laughs> So I'm going to start with a white. I'm going to change this fill color here to a white fill, like so. Good. Okay. So now what does this look like? Okay, we're going to whoosh, whoosh. Oh, yeah, here we go. One, two. So we're getting these irises opening up here, right? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> so now we're going to we're gonna duplicate it. Give me a third one. Give me a third circle here. We, we need to rule a threes this thing. Um, let's see, let's see, let's go back to here. We want to, I want to take this, um, kind of off white color. So I'm going to just use the most handy color pick around a little life hack. You can grab colors quickly using the character palette, uh, and the little, this is your fastest dose of eyedropper, or you can go an eyedropper or something and get its hex value. So I usually take the eyedropper, tap out there 
and then copy this hex value. Uh, so now I'm going to go in here and drop that down like so. So now we have these three colors whoop, 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 as they come on like so, right? How nice is that? So now we might want to massage our keyframes a little bit. So if you ever want to see the keyframes that you've placed on a layer, just select them all and hit U, okay? And now we're going to see all of the keyframes. Ah, uh, and uh, Mensa is asking, uh, do you aim for animations of about 20 to 25 uh, frames or so? Um, so when it comes to transitions specifically, um, I find that it, it is useful to um, try to get it done by, by about one second. Um, so there are a few timings to be aware of when you're creating transitions and especially what we're creating here, which is a, um, what we would call like a full, a uh, full alpha transition, meaning that the entire frame is going to be blocked at a certain point. So here, I'm going to turn off my transparency grid so you can see this sort of blackness here that the full frame is blocked at 17 frames in. That's a critical timing to know if you're going to use this in kind of an editing context because 17 frames is when we can do the switch. So if we were swapping from one type of footage, one footage behind to another, 17 frames is where that's your out. You know, we're, we can be out at 17 frames. So I tend to try to standardize that. So if I'm handing this off to an editor or someone else, I would want to standardize like, hey, all your transitions, you are clear at a certain frame, right? So you're you are clear at 20, you're clear at this. And uh, it generally helps to put a marker down on your timeline. So you can, if with, with nothing selected, you can hit the little asterisks and that will add a marker uh, onto your timeline. So then I'm just gonna put this at 17 when all of, when things are clear. So we are we are good to let people know, then you can you can terminate layers at that point. Okay, so here we are, we're transitioning, like we're transitioning to full white, which is fine, I suppose, or or this, this wonderful kind of uh, off-white color. We could go a little bit further. Um, we could add um, maybe a little bit more um, embellishment to this because in some of our other examples, uh, da, 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 we were using some drop shadows, for example. Um, so here we go. Here's a lovely drop shadow in the back. And I think that that, um, helps delineate things from each other Adds a little bit of depth. Who doesn't like a good drop shadow, right? So I'm going to add some out here and there's a few ways we can do that. Get a little hydrated first. Hmm. One of the ways we can do it is with an effect. So we can always use the effect drop shadow so we have this effect called drop shadow and we drop it onto a layer and now ooh, it's hard to really tell what's happening what's happening with this is there any anything noticeable out here at the edge i was told there was going to be a shadow on here i'm going to bring the distance down to zero and i'm going to increase the softness and you can start to see oh yeah something is happening out there something is happening <laughs> and we're going to dial that back a little bit we're going to dial it back like so okay good and the opacity here is at 50%. All right, so the softness, we're gonna go 30. And we're gonna take this drop shadow, we're gonna copy it, and we're gonna paste it onto the other two layers. So you can kind of see it's adding a little bit of dimensionality in here when they overlap. With this middle one, I'm gonna take its drop shadow and I'm just gonna soften it, soften it quite a bit more. Maybe bring the opacity down a little bit more. It doesn't need to be so extreme, right? <laughs> And then on this one here, again, this is this this appears too crunchy, so I'm going to kind of soften, soften that out. Now with now Tim, what's great is if I just called them um, if I just called them ambient occlusions, then we'd be back on board with them. So that's my that's my limit of hot takes for the day. Ambient occlusions are the drop shadow of. 3D. Uh, <laughs> so I think we we'll probably, I think, yeah, well, let's, let's soften this up a little bit, you know, just to add a little bit of variety between them. So there we go. That is our, 
and then we can we can kind of assess if this is a bit too jarring or bracing. So maybe we are going to do like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. So we've got we've got these whoosh 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 coming on. Great. Okay. So now if we were to go use this in context somewhere, um, we could just go ahead and if we were transitioning into a full screen, that would be great. However, we would probably want to, um, if we're going to go from footage to footage, then we are going to want a way to get out of this. We want to get out of this full, um, full color situation here. So I'm going to duplicate circle one. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to put it above everything. And this is where we're going to do something fun. I'm going to remove the drop shadow from here. And I want to use this layer to cut a hole through all the other layers. And I can do that by going in here into the mode. Now we've talked about set mat. Um, so set mat has allowed us to basically take alpha information from one layer and put it on another. We're going to change the mode. We talked about blending modes a little bit yesterday, and we are going to use one of these fun blending modes down here. We're going to use Silhouette Alpha. So this is going to create a hole in everything below it. So let's let's check back at our at what we've done. Boop, boop, boop. So now this thing kind of comes and chases everything away, and it's making a hole in everything. Boop, 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 wee. Wee. Like that. And this is another timing that we're going to want to be aware of. This is where we are clear, right? The entire transition has been completed at this point. So usually uh, you would put a marker there and then you would probably want to maybe trim uh, the layer to that point so, or tr trim the whole comp to that point. So I'm going to set my work area there. I'm going to right click. I'm going to, I'm going to go trim comp to work area. All right. So now we can enjoy we 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 like so wonderful a little, little ripples in a pond here so again let's save our work now let's go back to our uh, assembly example and if we want this transition example to come on between here <laughs> look at this it's our old friend markers they've come back to help us on here so i'm going to just position that marker right here right there where the transition happens where the changeover is going to go down and look at that. So gross moss, weep, weep, weep. Now I think I will take the transition example and I'm going to put it above everything. I'll put it above everything on this on this situation. I'm going to change its color to be like a yellow. And whoop, whoop, whoop. isn't that wonderful that we now have this kind of splashing transition to get us go through here and get to enjoy uh, <laughs> enjoy that stuff. So. And of course, all of the calls for the, the E.C. Abrams sound effect pack. We're, we're, wheels are in motion behind the scenes. <laughs> you you, you got to know we're working on stuff. Um, so this is all well and good, but today would not be would not be a good talk about templates if we didn't then turn this into a bit of a template. Because if we start using the same kind of transition over and over again, eventually it will feel a little bit boring. So... Wouldn't it be great if we could swap out those three colors all the time? And certainly we'd be changing between branded colors, but it'd be lovely if I could choose for it to be uh, dark and then light and then dark again, or, or however we wanted, right? So let us go into our, our transition example here, and we are going to open up. We are going to go window essential graphics the essential graphics is back and we're now working on the transition example so we've gone to the transition example let's give it a name circle transition wonderful and the properties that we want to put into this particular thing is color so we don't actually care about the strokes we didn't put any strokes on anything so we're going to just remove those clogging clogging up the interface here and we're just going to take our colors and we're going to drag them in there's a color there's a color there's a color you get a color picker you get a color picker um 
<laughs> Roland would like to know how to make templates. <laughs> For those who may not know, Roland Roland makes some excellent templates. He's a he's a master of the form. Check out his stuff when you have time. Um, so we're gonna go first color, and then this one here we're going to name second color, and then this one here we're going to name third color. Ooh. So I'm going to hit save, of course, always save your work. And then we are going to go back to the assembly example. And wouldn't you know it? Hey, master properties has showed up again. It's back. Thanks for coming, coming to be with me, master properties. And first, second, third color. We are now able to pick totally different colors, any color you like. You could choose a color. All the colors of the rainbow are here at your disposal. Now we have kind of a clown situation happening. Um, or what, what are we looking at here? I'm sure these are the brand colors of somebody. But. <laughs> so for this stuff, um, we are now able to pick uh, whatever colors we would like and remix it around at our leisure. So I hope that is sort of a good and useful thing that you can now do. We've now made one transition. The motion is perfect and beautiful and exactly how we wanted it. Um, and now uh, and then we get to enjoy these uh, these master properties. Ooh, and it's now going to be called essential properties. You know what? I'm into that. We're gonna we're gonna start using that word now. We're gonna start saying essential properties moving forward, get used to the new words. Um, they are essential graphics, so they should be essential properties. <laughs> Okay, so congratulations. We've now made um, a call out. We've made a transition. We made them into templates. You can also export these. You can export motion graphics templates and you can push them into Premiere so that you can you can work on them there or you can you can make use of them there. So if you're doing most of your editing there, um, definitely recommend uh, giving that a whirl. But today, today, because we are only getting started, that's all we need to be doing. <laughs> need some motion blur. We can always drop on some motion blur. We can, we can put on, we can put all kinds of blurs we, that you might like. Just make sure that you put the motion blur uh, for everyone. Uh, make sure you're, you're turning it on inside, whoop, inside the comp itself. And then things are going to look fine out here. I tend to, tend to do things... Um, without motion blur these days, um, I think because my eyesight is bad enough already. Um, <laughs> and I really like crisp lines for some reason. Um, I tend to go, I tend to smear uh, shapes rather than to um, put put the mobler on. Um, anyway, anyway, that's that's just me. Um, I'm not here to to shame anyone for their motion blur love. Um, so, the other thing that we want to talk about is text text plays a big a big role in social videos because just like we said yesterday when we were talking about lower thirds that people tend to read uh things more than they hear them because sound is off for whatever reason and so what we're going to do is we're going to create some text treatments we're going to talk about the text uh text animators in a little bit more depth than we did yesterday uh so i'm going to create a new comp here let's call it text treatment and we don't need the essential graphics panel anymore goodbye essential graphics it's nice to nice to have fun while you were here and let's make some text treatments some textual treatments again i'm going to pull up my proportional grid i'm going to grab my text tool and i am going to just give give myself a nice box here that's maybe i don't know this big you kind of want to figure out your framing for this stuff um, and we'll see, <laughs> see what we could do. Uh, so let's see, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of what, what things we can, we would say in a, in a social post, um, about mountains. Mountains are nice, I suppose. Um, squirrels are mean, uh, well, squirrels are not mean, they're, just confused. Uh, so I'm trying to think if there's any weird quotes that we can, I'm going to just really quickly quotes about mountains. 
Whoop. Here we are. Just going to grab this inspirational quote for everyone. The top of one mountain is always the bottom of another, which is, I think, factually inaccurate. Um, but anyway, <laughs> the point is, and who is this by? This is by Marianne Williamson. Okay. Well, you know, that's cool. Um, I'll take, take your word for it. Uh, <laughs> Ain't no mountain high enough. I like that. That is a quote I can get behind. So with uh, this particular thing, we have chosen to use a certain form of text here. So your text box, we've talked about this before, uh, or at least yesterday, And uh, but if you're new today, there are two ways you can use text, okay? So there is, you can just take your text tool and you can start typing out. And as you can see, type, 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 away it goes. It'll just continue getting getting larger and wider and, and all, all, over, all over the place, okay? Or you can take your text and you can draw a box. And this box will contain the text. Ain't no mountain high enough. Whoop, uh, kabam, to keep me inside this box. Um, as you can see, <laughs> that text wraps when it hits the edge of the box. So those are the two ways in which you could use uh, your, your text layers. Um, and also in here, you know, you got horizontal type, vertical type. They'll, they'll obey the same rules. But, 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 but. What we'll do here is we've got our, our text layer, uh, our excellent text layer. And what I'm going to do... Notice that I can kind of drag uh, this box around. It's not super visible because of the of the color. So I'm going to change this to be a fuchsia so that maybe we can enjoy uh, seeing seeing this box a little bit better um, as I drag it around and, and put it places. Um, so hopefully you can kind of see the lines um, that, that, that kind of define where this is. And what I want to do is try to put this in a way um, uh, no, let's, I'll leave it alone like that. Okay, so what we want to do is try to format this in a way that's going to make sense. Um, I'm going to make this much larger. I am going to take our font and make it a lot thicker. Thicken up that font. Font thick. And there we go. We're going to go like this. Perfect. So, with this in mind, if we were to animate this on, how are we going to do that? Hmm, let's do a way to animate all of this text, certainly. Well, if you twirl into your text layer, you twirl into the text here, and check out right here. It says animate. Oh, that's the button for me, of course. <laughs> Click the button, and then uh, it's presenting me with a lot of things. Well, start by just choosing what property about the text you want to and you want to alter, right? For us, I think we are going to alter the opacity. Opacity, fancy word for see-through, I guess. <laughs> How transparent this thing is. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Tim, you, you better be, don't be stepping on Sir Mix-a-Lot like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like bold fonts and I cannot lie. Um, so with this, uh, with this, let me talk you through how text animators work. We are applying this change. The opacity we're going to say is 50%. How much of the text should be 50% opacity? Well, in this case, we have a range selector that's been created, and it says from the start, 0% to the end, 100%. And hopefully you can see these little lines, these nice little lines here that are telling us how much of this is being selected, right? How much of this layer is being altered, is being applied this, right? This change is being applied to the range that happens to be from zero to 40%. Now I can change this as well. So now from 10% uh, to 40% of the layer is being altered in this way. And I hope that that makes sense. So if we wanted to use the text animators, to animate things on, and we would say, um, 
we take the opacity here and we bring it down to zero, okay? Then I guess we could animate this on by simply shrinking how much of the text is being selected. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what we're gonna do, Mike's got the size of it, we're gonna change it from fading up per character to fade up per word. So we're now counting per word as we go up. Boop, 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 like that. And I'm gonna make some more changes. I'm gonna make another change in here. We're not gonna be adding, we're gonna be subtracting. I've changed my mind. So <coughs> the this selection here, what we are selecting now is what uh, we, are, we are taking away from the selection. So by default, if we selected nothing, everything is, is now not seen. We can't see anything anymore. But as we select more, as we're choosing what to remove from that selection, to remove things from taking it out of the, out of the darkness, we, we are now increasing that number. I hope that makes sense. So what we're gonna do here is we are gonna take our range selector, we're gonna keyframe that end, and we're gonna go boop, 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 maybe, uh, maybe 110, and we're just gonna drag that ahead. So look at this. Boop, 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 boop. So these things animate on, and then at a certain point, I'd like it to animate away. I'd like it to just go away. And so I can now do that by taking the start, and let's just do, 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 like that, right? So let's say here at five seconds, um, like that. So we'll set up our keyframes to look a little bit like this. So things come on, and then it hangs out, and then it goes away, do, 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 like that. So hopefully that is, hopefully that is going to be good. <laughs> so we've got, we're now using our range selector, the single range selector to bring things on and take things away, which I think is wonderful. Now, what we would like to then do with this perhaps is maybe help this along. Let us let us try to ease our transition a little bit better. Now, first instinct is usually to uh, try easing these keyframes, right? If you wanted to ease this. Now, all this is doing is easing the size of that selection. So keep in mind that when you ease these keyframes, what you're actually easing is the size of the selection and how quickly that selection is changing. That's what we're altering when we ease those which is fine, you can definitely do that. But if you want to ease actually what's happening inside that selection, you want to play with the ease high and the ease low. So what I'm gonna do is crank that up a little bit. And you can kind of see that that has changed the character of how this comes on. So if we ease low back down to zero, you can see this is a much more kind of linear fade on of these things. And if we, if we turn this on, then we have that going on. So hopefully that, Hopefully that kind of fits um, with, um, with what we've been talking about, that to apply nuance to your motion, ease high and ease low are gonna help you out here in your text animators a little bit more than perhaps easing the, uh, the particular selection sizes, right? So that's a little bit confusing, but I hope that has made sense. Maybe the world is nothing but mountains, <laughs> Roland. <laughs> The world is entirely made of mountains. It's mountains all the way down. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> so with this uh, particularly wonderful quote, we can now let's make this into a little bit of a template. We do the same thing. I know we've been harping on it this whole time. I'm going to go into the essential graphics panel. I'm going to select which of these things. I'm dealing with. And it's going to be the text treatment is the one that we're going to be playing with here. And then we twirl into here. We take our source text. We drag it in here. And I'm going to type in quote. I'm just going to write because this is the quote they were putting in. Fantastic. Good. That's in there. We are locked down. We're going to save it. We are now going to go back into the assembly example. We're going to take our text treatment. We're going to drop it out here. Drop it out here. Like so. And as you can see, on top of the mountain, it's always the bottom of another. Hmm. And now maybe we want to reposition this. Let us make use of our proportional grid and to try to move this a little bit like so. Now, one of the crises, crises? 
I'm gonna say challenges. Mm, that seems strange. No one should be calling me currently. Oh, no, no, no. We won't. We shan't be allowing notifications today. Um, so, uh, as, as we've said, uh, the top of one mountain is always the bottom of another. Um, and we are going to take this layer and we are going to give it a little bit of a treatment, right? And we want it to kind of stand out a little bit. <laughs> I hope no one from the chat was calling me. How, how rude might that have been? Um, and we could apply a drop shadow uh, to this to help it kind of stand out a little bit from the background. Whoop, like so. So now we can actually kind of read the text a little bit better uh, as it comes off of things. Look, everyone, there's no there's no shame in, in having a drop shadow. Uh, no, no trouble at all. Um, however... There's another way to do this other than using effects. And sometimes I prefer to use layer styles. So let's talk a little bit here. As we're coming into the end, we're just gonna quickly talk a little bit about uh, layer styles. Um, and layer styles are kind of similar to effects, um, but everything is um, coming on, everything is applied in a different order uh, or a specific order. So layer styles kind of come in at the end and I tend to like layer styles um, for a few reasons, and I'll show you on this callout one of the interesting things, fun things you can do with these. So you you apply a layer style by going to the to the layer, and you go layer, of course, layer style, and then this is very similar to Photoshop. So if you are um, very <laughs> if you are um, very familiar with Photoshop, then a lot a lot of these um, layer styles are going to seem very similar. I'm going to drop a stroke on here and I want this to look a little bit like a sticker, right? So we can twirl into here. We twirl into the layer style. We twirl into the stroke and I'm just going to set it to be white, set the size to be maybe 10. And there we go. Wonderful. We now have this, this stroked outline of our sticker here. And then of course we can go into the layer style and go layer, layer styles. Hey, give me, give me a drop shadow on that too. Let's have one of those. Why not? Um, and then of course, all of these, uh, settings you might recognize from, um, <laughs> you might be recognizing from, uh, Photoshop. So we're going to go in here and we are just going to give this, um, kind of a size to it, a bit of a size. We just want to help kind of pop things off of the background a little bit, right? So I'm going to copy this drop shadow and we are going to put it onto our text. There we go. One of the things that's kind of nice about layer styles is kind of their, they, they respect uh, the frame maybe more than they do uh, the layer itself. Um, so check this out. I'm scaling up and down the call out here, but notice the stroke remains the exact same. So the stroke is always 10 pixels outside. So all of that, ooh, I'll just swat the microphone. Um, and so we, we're simply um, offsetting by 10 pixels always. It doesn't matter if the layer has been scaled up or down, right? It's not, it's not going to care about that. Um, and it's, it's similar for the rest of the, the effects as well. So there we go. We're just going to dial this stuff in here. Do, 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 kind of like that. So there we go. We have this wonderful quote that's coming on. We've got our mountain quote about mountain and and so on in that way <laughs> so hopefully that uh, is is good and useful to us now if we wanted to write something different in here um is is going to be good uh for us to to deal with let's see let's see what other things uh can we play with um in this in this space <laughs> let's do let's talk a little bit more um <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about um text animators because i want to make sure that those get their get their due i think that they are uh sort of one of the um <laughs> one of one of the uh, things that we certainly want to do, especially if you're just getting started with After Effects, I find 
that the text animator is a really powerful way to uh, to really personalize stuff that you might be doing. So a firm grasp of the text animator will, will help anybody out, I think. Um, so let us look at more ways that we might animate this block of text. So I'm just going to duplicate this and move it down here so that I can, I can show you another way to think about animating with the text animators, OK? Um, because I find that this is very, very useful. Um, it was certainly very useful to me at the beginning of my uh, career. So hopefully it will be useful for everyone else as well. <laughs> so here we go. So we have this second instance of the text, and we are going to animate. And there, there are, of course, yeah, <laughs> Reverb Mike, there are, are plenty of text animation presets um, that can hopefully hopefully get you started in understanding sort of what's happening. Um, I'm going to animate here. I'm going to animate. Again, we're going to animate the opacity again. Let's try to limit our factors as we're, as we're talking about this stuff. And what we're going to do here, we're going to twirl down into this range selector, and the advanced is where we're going to play. So... We got uh, the various units, um, and we're going to change the mode here. We're going to change the mode here from add, and we are going to change the mode. Mm, 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 no, no, no. We're going to work with the shape. Let me talk to you about the shape real quick. So when we're talking about, we talked about add and subtract, you know, those various things. Um, but now we're going to talk about shape. And so first, opacity is going to go to zero, and I'm going to change the shape from square to ramp up. Okay, interesting what's happening, right? That now at the start of the selection, you can see here things are opaque and towards the end they are transparent. That is because the shape of the change is a ramp, meaning at the start of the ramp it's being completely applied and at the end of the ramp not applied at all. Or, you know, the other way around. <laughs> Sorry, we're we're ramping up. So we're we're ramping up whoop, to apply this change. So at the beginning of the ramp, nothing is happening. At the end of the ramp, everything is happening. So that's the ramp. Now, how would we animate with the ramp? Well, instead of uh, changing the start and end, what we're going to do is we're going to say, how much of this do we want to select? Let's select 50% of it. And now we can animate using what's called the offset. So we can push the offset through and that will cause things to animate. Because once the ramp has gone through everything, everything will, will remain at, it, it'll be at the top of the ramp or it'll be at the bottom of the ramp, depending on, on where you're going to end up, right? So we're, we're, we're pushing, imagine you're pushing this ramp through, this change of value is being pushed through. So it's a little bit different. So the offset here, we're going to set this to minus 50, meaning that range selector has been pushed, all that ramp has been pushed all the way off, right? And then we are simply going to set a keyframe on that offset, and we're going to move it ahead. And let's try to match the timing uh, with this other one here. So it's animated all the way on by there. So let's do the same thing. We're going to push that offset to have gone all the way through like so. And now we can observe that right it's a little bit smoother right it's a smoother thing and we're going to base this off of words for example and now let's we can observe both of them together and you can decide for yourself which one you find more pleasing right we look at that so it, it is it is being pushed being pushed through we're pushing the ramp through the situation we're offsetting that ramp and we're getting this kind of smoother transition of things. Now, the ease low and the ease high are how we're going to be able to add um, add some nuance to this. And notice what happens as I'm adjusting the ease low. Look how it, it's like we are 
it's like if you were making a curves adjustment or if you were uh, altering that speed graph, you know, we're pushing those influence handles. So now it's a little bit more of an extreme change, right? So maybe we want to ease that off just a little bit, just a little bit. So there you go. Now we have a little bit of, of change there and we could maybe ease on the other side of the ramp. What do you think about that? So we could maybe ease this up to 30. But now we have these kind of two ways that I hope kind of make sense um, for for animating with stuff. Now, granted, we're just using opacity here, but I'm hoping that, um, you know, you can see how the opacity chain is being pushed through. Let me add a different property. Let me add position to this. And I'll just add a little positional change. And you can see how that looks when we push a positional change through this. Um, so that's that's kind of nice as it's kind of easing its way in. Or maybe you want to add the property uh, of scale into this. Okay, so we're gonna add that property in. We'll see. Look at that, isn't that interesting? We're adding more and more things onto here. But the movement is the same, right? The, the, that change in value from, from low to high, same stuff. And here we go, we're gonna just dial it back and so hopefully that has been um, helpful in explaining a little bit about the text animator and hopefully gets you started um, with that stuff. I, I prefer the second one that we did, uh, but that's fine. That's fine. Anyway, let me do a little quick recap of what we did today. And uh, hopefully this has been, uh, been helpful and instructive. We started off by having a look at um, sort of yesterday's stuff where we, we looked at you know how this this logo came on we kind of analyzed a little bit about uh the motion here so the circle popping on the banner getting large and then we went ahead and we used some of that work we'd already done so that we, we don't have to work super hard and then we have made this little call out here so now we can finally call out the gross moss here we can call it out for for how it looks um and that was nice because we got to look at, at modifying properties and at parenting things. And we, we looked at using the set mat effect to determine where we can see certain thing, things. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's right. We could always use our, our time remap effect to, uh, uh, to go back in time a little bit, which we use to control uh, running that in reverse. Then we made a little transitional element, made a transition of just some simple circles, just some circles growing. But then, you know, by, by offsetting them in time and by changing one of them, by changing one of them to be a silhouette alpha blending mode, we've created that lovely, that hole that kind of gets stamped through. Here we go. That gets stamped through the whole thing and transition us from one scene to another, which I think is done very nicely. And then finally, we talked a lot about text animators and, and how to make those things work. Uh, and then we, uh, then we went ahead and, I mean, at the end of each of those segments, we went ahead and, and we made each of them into a little bit of a template, a little bit of a, of a Mogurt. Um, so hopefully this has been a good introduction to sort of procedural, um, procedural stuff. Hopefully this will help you create your social media kits. Hopefully this will help you creating brand graphics um, in your in your works. Um, before I get out of here, before I get out of here, I do want to let you know there is a rich full day of activities happening here on Adobe Live. So I'll just call up the schedule real quick uh, so that you know. You know, we've got daily creative challenges going on all day. Lots of talk about branding, lots of great stuff about design coming up. Um, if you've enjoyed looking at, at this logo and stuff, you're definitely going to want to stick around for uh, Julia's talk uh, of, of uh, creating a brand identity uh, with a little bit of Illustrator, a little bit of XD apparently. So that's going to be great. Um, I've been your host, Evan Abrams, hanging out for this, these past two days together. Um, I hope that's been fun and uh, you've enjoyed spending time with me. I've enjoyed spending time with you. If you want to find more of me around the internet, I'm, I'm at EC Abrams everywhere. Um, go back and watch part one of this stuff. Everything we talked about here is going to be archived on here for all time and all space. You will find me uh, streaming on Behance uh, on the weekends. So hang out 10 o'clock Eastern time uh, if you want to see that. And sometimes on Mondays. It's always a pleasure to get to hang out. Thank you for, for jumping in the chat. Thanks for hanging out. And a big thanks to, to Tim Mobest for holding it down. Holding it down in the chat. <laughs> Keeping all these rowdy people in line. Um, 
Have a good rest of your day. Stay creative, be kind to each other, and I will see you around the internet. Okay, thanks again and, and bye for now.